I'm Lexington Stanway, and this is my steed, Cheap Purple. Now, that's not bad. I'm Lexington Stanway, and this is my steed, uh, the Perennium Falcon. Oh, I like that. Hello. So, I've bought an MT-07. And I thought some of you might be interested in learning a little bit more about it. Uh, first of all, let me tell you, I am not a professional reviewer. Um, I'm not new to motorcycling, but you wouldn't know it from the way I ride. I've returned to motorcycling after a very long break, and I do ride like a total knob. So I won't be going very fast. I am supposed to be running the bugger in as well. Nice move. Dick nuts. Oh, here's a roundabout. Okay. Fucking hate mini roundabouts. Everybody does. So, yeah, it's a nice sunny day. Uh, in the year 2014. Which sounds like the future. But for you, through the miracle of time, this is probably the past. Now, if it's not the past for you, and you're looking at the 2014 Yamaha MT-07, then you're probably considering a couple of other bikes as well. You're probably considering the Suzuki SV650, of which I am a, well, I would say a proud owner. Technically, I am an owner of one of those as well. And a Kawasaki uh, 6N. I myself was very interested in the Kawasaki uh, 6, and I was thinking I might get the F because I want the bike mainly to commute and it has a fairing. And the fairing is not currently an option on the Yamaha. Now, my assumption would be that when they launch this bike in the US, because they didn't launch it naked, they will launch a fared version based on the immense popularity of the um, uh, 6F, the fared version, over there. No, not for you, you're a scooter, know your place. Now, I've read a lot of comments by Americans saying that they want this bike, or even the uh, 6N in the US. There seems to be an appetite for unfair bikes. Yeah, who knows? They didn't launch it there. We'll see what will happen. And the other two are also worthy choices. I, I have to say, if you are looking at one of these three bikes, there really are three right answers to the question, which one do I want? It, it comes down to which one you want. I mean, obviously I went for this one for reasons I shall outline. But there's no wrong answer, really. I mean, the Suzuki, uh, I had the naked version, uh, in Britain at least, the, uh, the S version is much more common. They renamed it the Gladius for about 10 minutes and then they changed it back again. I don't know why the fuck they would have done that. Um, but yeah, I had uh, the old one, very old one. Am I too high a gear? I can never tell. I mean, it does pull from very low revs, but uh, you know, it's chucking. It doesn't quite feel right. But then I'm running it in and it's giving me an eco light. There's no, you're going to crash indicator. It's just eco. Fuck it. Um, what the fuck am I talking about? Yeah, Suzuki. Um, I didn't personally like the looks of the relaunch, the Gladius style, sort of two-tone and chrome thing. Uh, but if you do, then obviously that's going to make the difference for you. The Yamaha itself... Uh, this way, I suppose. Um, I think as a sort of neutral kind of styling. It's not very distinctive looking, I wouldn't say. Uh, the ER6N is quite distinctive looking and it's like they've made it... Uh, it's not too bad on these rough roads. Well, it's not terrible written. Um, yeah, they've made it ugly on purpose and I think at first that counted against it, but increasingly as manufacturers follow suit with Yamaha, not Yamaha, well yeah, Yamaha to a certain extent, but uh, Kawasaki more than the others, and ugly up their bikes every year. I think the uh, 6N looks more normal than the Gladius does now. It looks a little bit old-fashioned to my eyes. And the Yamaha is kind of neutral in its looks, I think. 
In terms of performance, I mean, what Kawasaki did was looked at that market um, that Suzuki were chasing with the Gladius 650 and uh, said, yeah, we'll fucking have some of that. And they took a different route, technically, with the motor, but they emulated that bike. They made their own version of the 650 and um, did a good job. They came up with a good bike. It was built cheaply. It's very conventional. It's, you know, there's nothing very exciting about it. But you can say the same of the Suzuki. A lot of people would argue that a real V-twin is nicer. That's what they want. Fair enough. Then it's the Suzuki. The engine in this, I would say, does a much better impression of a V-twin, even though it's a parallel twin, than the Kawasaki. Obviously, I've ridden this a little bit more. I've only had a test ride on the uh, 6M. But the vibrations on that were much more high frequency. And although I, you feel it more through the bars and the pegs on this, definitely, it feels like you're riding a motorbike. You know, it's not annoying. It's not an annoying buzz like it was on the Kawasaki, which you feel through the seat. This is miraculously much lighter than... I don't mean in, it feels lighter handling, because um, I don't think there's much in it, really. I mean it physically has less mass, much less mass than the uh, Kawasaki. No. Uh, for the purposes of uh, pushing it around, paddling it about backwards, picking it up if you do drop it, this is going to be more attractive to people like me with skinny little matchstick arms and legs. Or even ladies. They always talk about these bikes as being suitable for beginners and ladies. Uh, now I'm sure, rationally speaking, there must be a class of lady who is not a beginner. Unless they just begin by a bike and then quit immediately. I think what they mean is it has um, a low seat height. And by low seat height, I think they mean an average seat height. Because all these bikes have a seat height of about 800 millimeters. Uh, if you're American, that's, um, you know, it's about that far off the floor. Look, I saw some gravel and didn't fall off. Imagine that. For those purposes of not having to use as much leg power to move the bugger about, this is much better. Um, it's got an interesting seat, which I'll show you. It's quite wide at the back, so it's quite a lot of movement. I can get right back here, and my whole ass is on the back of the seat, with uh, my lower back sort of pressed in, because it's a, a split seat. Um, or you can come right forward, and it's very narrow around the tank, which means... Um, little legs go a longer way. So it's, it's quite clever. It looks a bit weird, I have to say. But um, it works extremely well. The Suzuki, I, I don't know, I think it's it's almost entirely a match with the Kawasaki. It's just a question of the style that you want and how much money you're going to pay. And after Kawasaki came after the Suzuki and matched every specification and matched the price, um, the Suzuki got a little bit cheaper. Kawasaki has done wonderful things with their finance. I was offered uh, a pre-registered uh, 6N for, I don't know, four and a half-ish. Brand new, pre-registered. Horse nod. Yeah, huge discount. I mean, I, I wasn't buying cash, but even so, Kawasaki will do you 0% interest, and uh, ew, Yamaha won't do that. Not unless you're spending more money than this costs, anyway. So, essentially, Yamaha came after the Kawasaki, and instead of doing what Kawasaki did to Suzuki and making the same bike, same price, they made a better bike with a cheaper price. And obviously Kawasaki can't reflex come back with a new bike, so what they've done is they've, they've come back with pricing. And they really have beaten Yamaha on pricing. And how much better is this bike than the Kawasaki? To most people, most of the time, every day, how much is it better is this going to be? It really comes down to a question of preference, doesn't it? I mean, there's no fared option here. Although the fared option is a little bit more expensive from Kawasaki. Fucking know where the fuck I am.
I live around here, but I didn't grow up around here, so the roads I used to tool about on are not these, what do these signs say? So the Yamaha slogan, morning. Well, there are a couple of Yamaha slogans that uh, they've come up with for this. One, rise up your dark side. I don't know what that meant in Japanese, but obviously they've translated it rather poorly and it's just gibberish. Um, and two, the dark side of Japan. Now, when I think of the dark side of Japan, I immediately think of abuse of prisoners of war. I think of the terrible suffering of the people of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I think of uh, Fukushima. Um, I think of ages of imperialism and feudalism and the uh, suffering and futility of the lives of serfs. But in Yamaha, think about motorbikes. And I think perhaps a better slogan than the dark side of Japan for this might be you can ride it about. Hey, it's a little motorbike. Ooh, oh, it's, it's, like, it's good, isn't it? Hey, motorbikes. I think that would be more appropriate because when I'm riding this, I think, hey, look, my motorbike. Oh, it's good, isn't it? Look, I think I lost. Hey, oh, it's a lot of little bike, isn't it? Oh. I don't think of the dark side of Japan. I think this is quite good. I think this is the friendly, accessible side of Japan. Not that kind of friendly, accessible side that looks cute and then you realise it's tentacle porn, but, you know. Genuine, friendly, without an agenda side. I am running this in. Look, airplanes. Calm down. Right, so if these are aeroplanes, I must be near the airfield, he said, navigating. Yeah, so anyway, there's nothing dark or sinister or really very exciting about this motorcycle, to be honest. It's just a nice little runabout. Um, and the fact that it has some hooligan potential, and if you are so inclined and have the skill and uh, worried about falling off, etc., you know, you can wheel it about and be a dick with it. I imagine a lot of these would end up as stunt bikes. I mean, the, the torque is very accessible. I'm not sure it's all the engine. I think it's as much the gearbox as anything. I mean, six gear is much more relaxed than the others. I mean, not much, not stunning, but it is, which, you know, gives the other ratios a little bit more tightness if they want them. Feels a bit like you've got a big sprocket on the back. But that's great for just, you know, rolling around traffic and uh, avoiding constant gear shifts. Where this bike is not so great is when you're actually going fast. If you go onto the motorway and you want to give it beans, uh, it's not so great. It doesn't feel very stable. I mean, it's, it's okay, but obviously you're going to get wind, aren't you? to get somewhere I can stop and give you a little bit of a walk around before the battery runs out. Ouch. I hope that wasn't in the camera. I think we're getting near. I see a windy mill. Starting to get a little bit scenic. See, this is the Essex which nobody complains about on television. It's perfectly true to say that Essex is full of terrible travs who are horrible people in every way. Isn't that true of everywhere you've ever been? But it's also true to say that lots of posh people live here. 
I mean, this is an Essex I can't live in because it's too fucking expensive. Wouldn't it be nice, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be nice to live in a place like this? It's all still here. It's just that we don't make stuff like this anymore. For whatever reason, when we build buildings now, we don't make them nice, we make them shit. When we educate people now, we don't educate them well, we educate them poorly. Well, actually, I know what the reason is. It's because everybody gets it now. There was a time, of course, where if you wanted to sit on a chair, you had to be the king. And it was a really fucking nice chair. Golden shit. But other people didn't have chairs, and now everybody can have a chair. Well, they're not so nice. But we've all got one. And I suppose it's the same with um, housing and education, really. should have enough juice to capture fishing field. Weak bridge. Shit, better take it easy. Oh, do you ever get that nasty vibration in the end of your cock? Not the good kind. The kind that, you know, makes you worry about getting some terrible nerve damage from riding a motorcycle. As opposed to the groovy kind of nerve damage from drills. Engine braking is pretty decent. Oh, your indicator on, fuck nuts. I'm giving a bug a bike a nod. Does he nod? Does he fuck? Why did I bother giving it to him? The fucking bike a nod. That was a bike a nod, a little song. Oh, my vibrating cock. What is going on with it? It doesn't normally vibrate. It's only when I ride the motorcycle. It's saying he's a motherfucker. No, it's just gonna fucking drive into me, are you? What the fuck? I lost some fucking traffic, the thing that this bike was made for. Oh, I've got some shit in my eye, I might have to stop. Ow, fuck. Ever. 